Hey everyone, this is Jay, also known as Jay Nemesis over on eToro.com where I trade as a popular investor. Uh, obviously you guys can go and follow me or copy me there if you are not already aware of me. If not, then I guess you already know me. Um, so this video is uh, a little bit different to normal. I wanted to start like a little vlog series of just kind of discussing interesting topics that I come across uh, on a regular basis. Uh, some of them uh, more related to trading than others, but you know, all kind of around that central theme, I suppose. Um, today's video, I wanted to talk really quickly about uh, a tweet that was put out by Matty Greenspan. Um, before I show you the tweet, I'll explain who Matty is very briefly. Uh, so over on eToro, um, he's actually uh, got a profile here as a popular investor. Um, so he, uh, I think he lives in Israel still, but it says United States, so I'm not sure. Um, he might be back in the US now. Uh, but Matty used to work for eToro uh, as their chief analyst. Um, he's always been kind of focused on like macroeconomics and things like that, but he kind of pivoted into cryptocurrency and uh, the difference in his knowledge from when I first met him to where he is now is pretty staggering. Um, so if you don't follow him on eToro, then I think he is worth a follow. His posts are usually pretty interesting. Uh, so yeah, I'd highly recommend following him. Um, and on Twitter and stuff as well. He's also got a newsletter that's full of really interesting stuff. But he posted a tweet that kind of intrigued me. So if we head over to Twitter, I'll, I'll read it out for you. So he tweeted earlier today saying, interest rates, bond yields, and now crude oil. What will be the next asset to be worth less than zero? Um, immediately, something came to my mind. Uh, and so I answered him. I said, uh, not so much an asset, but electricity. Uh, Already in many regions, it goes negative at certain times of day. This is due to the growth of wind and solar. As renewables continue to ramp, it may eventually simply become a free, simply become free, uh, a dilemma for investors in the space who will never get a return on investment. Uh, I then followed up because I ran out of characters saying, uh, it puts energy companies in a precarious position in a decade or so. I expect power will be nationalized in most countries once we hit that tipping point. So I just kind of wanted to kind of expand on uh, this topic a little bit because I find it uh, interesting. Um, I guess you can already kind of see my viewpoint uh, since I summarized it in those two tweets. Um, but I do think that companies like EDF Energy and, and, and such who are going out and building these huge offshore wind farms and uh, you know massive solar farms and things and then selling power to, uh, to the grid, to consumers, um, I think uh, they will be in a really difficult position in around a decade or so. Um, and I'm not convinced on which which way things are going to go for the solution, although I did highlight what I suspect is the most likely outcome in my tweet. So the way that I can see this unfolding is, is I, first I'll explain the problem actually. So the problem is that generally speaking, solar uh, and wind takes years to pay for itself before it starts actually generating your profit. And so when it comes to building it, you need to kind of assess the market and kind of predict essentially how much the power is going to be worth by the time you've finished recouping your investment and then how much longer into the future it will continue to generate profit for you. So I have some solar panels on my house. Um, it's if, if you kind of take away the government incentives and things like that, then it's basically expected to pay for itself in around about 10 years. Uh, obviously, if you scale up your installations and you're doing it on a huge commercial scale, then uh, you can you can bring that down quite substantially and, and you know, um, come come out with some slightly better deals and, and bigger partnerships and things to uh, to make it more economically viable. But even still, you're still looking at, you know, maybe five or six years for these big projects to pay for themselves before they start generating your profit. And so if you imagine a world in which we are already at, for example, 90% uh, ninety percent of the grid uh, fueled by green energy and renewables, um, you can pretty quickly see a problem. So first of all, uh, if, if we again make some more assumptions and assume that most of that is coming from solar, uh, then it's, it's pretty clear that throughout the day prices will be negative. 
there, there is simply not enough demand for the solar that's being generated throughout the day and not all of it can be stored in batteries so that's going to end up with uh, a negative price as people try and just give it away for free or whatever and and you know get people to use the power so that takes away immediately a huge chunk of the people that you could be selling it to um, because you know they can get it for free because there's just too much of it um, so that leaves you with uh, with overnight once it's been stored in uh, stored in a battery or something like that or maybe uh, some energy coming from wind where where the price is still there so that's that's uh, already a much slimmer window and of course if you've built a, a project and everyone else is building out their solar farms and their wind farms as well at the same time um, then by the time you reach year four, it might already be at the point where even the overnight power has also turned negative. Um, I already see this myself. I have a, a power wall connected up to my solar, and at certain points during the night, the demand is so low, um, and the nuclear power stations are still obviously operating, um, and wind, uh, that you can actually charge from the grid for free. So I charge my battery for free from the grid sometimes. Um, and so already we can kind of see this squeezing window and the, the, the further into the future we go, the worse this situation is likely to become, especially in, in uh, you know, nations that have a lot of these kind of assets available. So nations especially that benefit from wind power like the UK um, are, are the ones that are most likely to encounter this problem first. So if, if you build a wind farm and right now, then yeah, sure, it's fine. You can, you can sell it throughout most of the day. But if, you, if, you, if that same wind farm is still operating in uh, five years time from now, that window is going to be much, much smaller. And eventually that window will basically entirely disappear um, as there's simply more energy being generated than there is demand for that energy. So there are a few ways that I can kind of see this situation resolving. The first is subsidies. So the government could subsidize the industry, basically, and, and help fund those projects. Uh, we still need the power from it, um, and it's always nice to have uh, a bit more power than you actually need as well. So perhaps governments will simply just help cover any losses incurred by companies that are building out these big projects. The next thing is that potentially we could see it nationalized. This is what I said in my tweet. Maybe uh, maybe we will simply take over all of those power companies because ultimately the profit margins will no longer really be there. So maybe it just makes more sense for it to be entirely state run um, or community run potentially even as well. So you could have uh, maybe some cooperatives or smaller communities taking over these projects. Um, and, th and the third way I guess is with carbon credits. So you could essentially create a system of, of offsetting carbon um, we're still going to be using oil for things like petrochemicals and stuff like that. And so potentially people, uh, other businesses or individuals may see this as a good way to uh, try and offset some of their carbon. And so that could become the main source of revenue for the companies producing power this way. Um, it's just kind of an interesting thing to think about, I think. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not sure which way it's going to go out of those three options. Maybe there's a fourth option I haven't considered. I'd, I'd love to hear your, your thoughts on it. Um, but it's something to bear in mind when you're investing in this uh, in this industry. You know, if I go back to eToro, you know, some of the staples of my portfolio are things like SolarEdge um, or, or uh, SunPower I would love to buy, but unfortunately it's not enabled yet on eToro. Um, there are some others as well, Enphase, things like that. But the risky ones, um, so, so there's a reason I invest in them, right? Like they're in a different business. They're producing the panels, they're producing the wind turbines um, or, or the inverters or the batteries. Um, if, if you're investing in companies that are actually in the business of selling that energy um, and funding those, uh, those big installations, then I think uh, it, it becomes a risky investment. Uh, a few years down the line. Um, so that's, uh, that's I guess, what I wanted to highlight, right? Uh, that I think uh, eventually we're going to reach this strange point where it's almost not worth building any more renewables because, you know, you can't sell the energy that you produce from it. Um, but at the same time, we may not have actually filled that gap. We may still be running on that small little uh, sliver of our grid on uh, dirty fuels when we don't need to simply because nobody is willing to make that final investment because they're just not so sure that they'll ever see a profit from it. 
So uh, yeah, just an interesting thing to think about. Uh, hopefully you guys liked this quick little video. Uh, I know it was a bit kind of ranty and all over the place, um, but I just thought it was kind of an interesting subject to talk about. So uh, if you like it, please give it a thumbs up and follow me on YouTube. Uh, subscribe to me, whatever it's called, I don't know. <laughs> um, follow me on, on Twitter and, of course, on eToro. And, uh, yeah, I'd love to hear your comments. Maybe you've thought of some different ways that this could play out in the future. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.